So what we're making is this tree. Isn't that just the cutest? In your kit is everything that you need. You've got an interfacing, you've got batting, you have all the fabric, and you have these adorable buttons. So these are ombre buttons. They come in one, two, three, four, five different shades of green. And there's various sizes inside the package. So like these are the ones that I've already opened. These are the darkest sets and they're in various different sizes. On the back of the pattern, there's a little star template. We're gonna take our fusible, two-sided, our two-sided fusible, and we're gonna put this on top of that. We're just gonna trace out that star shape. I drew out my star shape, and I'm going to take my paper-backed fusible off the star shape, and I'm gonna stick it on to the back of my yellow fabric. You don't wanna cut the shape out before you stick it onto the fabric, and you'll see why in a second. So I'm just gonna take this, I'm gonna take the paper off the back, and I'm gonna fuse it down onto my, um, my star fabric. So I've cut around my star almost completely. You can see the fabric kind of through the fusible, which makes it kind of neat to place. The thing I hear the most people complain about with um, taking fusible off is that when you start picking at the corner, it doesn't come off or it frays up the fabric. If you take a sewing pin and you just scratch a line into the back side of your paper, see when you separate it, it kind of pops apart and then you can peel it from the inside out. Then your corners are nice and clean and crisp and you didn't pick at any of the edges. Now, this fusible is tacky, which means you can position it and stick it down, and then you can move it around. And until you iron it, it's sticky and repositionable. So we're going to lay out our layout, and we're going to see where our star goes. Okay? I've already put the fusible back on the back of my tree trunk. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to scratch it and pull the paper off. And now this piece is also tacky to the touch and we'll talk about layout now. Now to talk a little bit about the stabilizer that's in your kit. This stabilizer is really um, heavy, kind of papery. It is a non-woven um, heavyweight fusible stabilizer. Or interfacing, I'm sorry it's not stabilizer. Um, the shiny side is fusible, the papery side is not. So we're going to take and follow the pattern's instructions on how and where to fuse this interfacing. This interfacing is gonna help stabilize your buttons. So we're gonna fuse this and then we're gonna layer everything. Now I have basically made a quilt sandwich with my top, my batting, and my interfacing. And now I'm taking my ruler and with a friction pen, I am just marking some quilting lines with my ruler. I'm partial to doing a grid when I um, do this type of quilting simply because anybody can do it. If you mark your lines, you just follow the lines with your um, sewing machine and go back and forth. You want to start in the center when you start quilting though so things don't shift too much. But with this interfacing on the back, it should really stay stabilized. All right, now I have stitched my diagonal lines all the way across. Now I started and I went one way and turned around and came back the other way, came back the other way, came back the other way. See those puckers? This is why you go one way and then back up the other. Otherwise the puckers are all going to go in the same direction. But now I want to show you a trick. Got the steam on in my iron and I'm going to press over what I've quilted. And look at that. Okay, so if you are quilting in your domestic machine and you see this, don't freak out. It'll be okay. Um, if you start one direction, turn around, go back up the other way, down the other way like that, it'll keep your fabric kind of balanced out, but it will make it look like it's going up and down in weird ways. But I'm telling you, just put the steam to it. And what the steam does is it helps the fibers relax in the direction that they're going and everything comes out smooth again, okay? 
it's really kind of really cool. It's, you know, it's all sciencey and stuff. So now we have this nice flat surface that we're gonna build our tree on. I have used the diagram that's in my pattern to figure out the angle of where my tree is gonna go. I used a highlighter, a friction highlighter. And the reason I marked it out with a highlighter is because the line is very easy to see, but will iron away. I wanna have a very obvious space where I'm gonna put my buttons. I've stuck down my star and my tree bottom based on the diagram and we're going to fuse these down but try really hard not to iron away our our friction marks. So I'm going to turn my steam off because I don't want the steam to iron away the friction and we're just going to fuse these down. Now I'm going to use a monofilament thread to just stitch around the edges of these so that you can't see them but now our, our trunk and our star are stitched in. Now we're gonna start working on our buttons. What we're gonna do is we're gonna sew these buttons on by machine. Did everybody know that you can sew buttons on by machine? What I'm gonna use is my Quilter Select glue stick. I've talked about this glue stick before because it is my absolute favorite. I like it because it goes on yellow, but when it dries, it's clear. And I've already started gluing my buttons on. Now, I would probably do this in stages so that you don't um, shuffle your buttons around a whole bunch, but I just started gluing the buttons on. See, they're already stuck on there. So I took the fabric glue and I'm just gonna put a little bit this side of the buttonholes and this side of the buttonholes. You can put it on the buttonholes if you want to, but what's gonna happen is gonna get stuck on your fingers. And we're just gonna glue down our buttons randomly and cover this triangle shape. Now, a couple of tips. As you're gluing the buttons on, try to make the buttonholes go the same way. So see how they're all horizontal, the way I've glued them on? This is gonna be easier when you get to your machine. Okay, so you're gonna to wanna to cover that rectangle, even though when we're all done, if you take this to your iron and you just miss the steam over it, friction pens come away with friction the energy that's coming off your steam is going to make that disappear. Now, I don't usually use friction pens on my quilt tops because I don't really trust that they won't come back at some point or that they won't do something weird. But for something that equates to basically an art project and because we're gonna cover this line with buttons, I'm not that worried about it. I'm sure everybody has this foot in their machine. Have you ever actually used it? <laughs> This is the foot that lets you sew buttons on. So what you do is, if you're gonna sew a button on a shirt or something like that, you take your button and you put it between that little thing that looks like a forklift and it holds the button. And that little, um, we'll call it a hummingbird beak, sets right between the holes. Now here's something I never realized until I learned how to sew a button on by machine. All buttonholes are the same distance apart, no matter what size the button is. Even if there's two holes or four holes, the buttons are the same distance apart. The buttonholes are same distance apart. So you put your button in that little holder and you line up those red marks and we're gonna call that a hummingbird beak. Can you see that? The stem. The stem, okay. That holds your button on. Then you put the whole foot in your machine and clip it on like you do any other foot, okay? Now, since we glued our buttons on, we're not gonna put them on like that. I just wanted you to see how the buttons set into them. But instead, since I've already glued my buttons where I want them to be, now you don't have to. If you wanna set the button in the foot and then just stick it down where you're gonna go, that's fine. Um, but what I would probably do is as you're putting these on, I would probably build the base first so that your foot isn't coming down on top of other buttons. And then you can just work from the top, uh, from the bottom of the tree to the top. For this instance, we're going to put our button on our tree fabric, and we're going to take that buttonhole and we're going to set it. We're going to set that foot on top of our button. All right. So see how that's just sort of resting right there in the middle. We're going to give you some tips to make sure that all lines up. In your machine, when you go to your stitches. 
We're gonna go into the screen, or if you have a mechanical button, you probably have something that shows buttonholes. If you go into your buttonhole screen, and most of the time it's all the way at the bottom. So these are all the different buttonholes you can make. Down at the bottom, all machines that have decorative stitches that I've ever seen have this weird little circle with a line in it. That's the stitch that you wanna choose when you use this foot. If you have a brother machine, it will make this picture in the screen to make sure you have the right foot on. It's your M foot, okay? So turn that buttonhole or that decorative stitch on. Then we're gonna come over to our, we're gonna line up that space. Put your foot down and then when you put your foot down, the foot is gonna hold it in place. I always double check and make sure that I'm going the right place because I it still makes me a little bit nervous to do this. And I just wanna make sure that I know what I'm doing here in the beginning. Make sure that that's going into the right hole, make you a tie off stitch, and then stitch your hole. Now my machine will take a tie off stitch before it stops. Yours, you might need to do a couple of stitches. Cut the thread and then when you lift your foot and pull the button out towards you, look at that. Now you can just go through and sew all of your buttons on just like that. So you're just gonna go from button to button and lay them out and sew them on. So we're gonna talk about hand sewing a button on just for fun anyway. So I've got a doubled over length of thread and I made this a color that you can see. We're gonna make a quilter's knot and then we're gonna sew one of these on by hand. And I'm gonna give you a couple of tips on sewing a button on. When you're sewing a button on where you're gonna be able to see it on both sides, there's a couple of things that make your stitches look really nice. So. For this project, you're not gonna see the back of this once it's quilted, so it doesn't really matter if it looks great. But if you're going to, say, put a button on a shirt, something you're going to see the back, when you take your first stitch, pull your thread up, kind of close to the inside of the buttonhole, and then take your thread down close to the inside of your buttonhole. That's gonna keep everything cleaner. Now, if you go to the back, and you can see where your knot is, try to take your needle up right where the knot is before you come up to this side. And when you go back down, try to make sure that you put your needle down in the same hole that you went up the first time. And you just have to sort of flip it from the front to the back. Because then you don't get, you know how sometimes you sew a button on and you end up with this really messy bit on the back? You kind of have to do it intentionally, but if you put the needle up and down the same space, you get a much cleaner stitch, okay? So now on the back side, we are going to, I'm gonna trim that thread away just so I can show you how to make a neat knot. I usually stitch about four stitches and I usually stitch my buttons on with double thread. If you want this to look really pretty, you can use like a pearl cotton or something thicker that's gonna really fill that buttonhole. You can do all kinds of really neat decorative stitches when you sew a button on. Now if I cut my tails off that were there when we started, since we made a good knot, this is okay. You can cut your tails away. Now you have a nice clean stitch there. So when you go to tie this off, take a really tiny bite under all those stitches. And I usually make two loops. I'll take a couple stitches underneath in the same space just to really secure that um, button. And then when I tie it off, I'll make a loop and go through my loop twice. Nancy. Okay. 
And then depending on what you're sewing it to, run your stitch through so that your tails are kind of buried. And if you're doing this on a shirt or something, you can usually run the tails the needle through where the interfacing is so that you can hide the string, but, you, but you've got a nice tight knot and you can cut your tails that way, okay? So if you don't want to, if it freaks you out to sew these on by machine, then don't. You can sew them on by hand. It's not a big deal. When we're done putting all these buttons on here, this whole shape will be completely covered in all these beautiful buttons.